What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steven Asantoski here of MGO Fish, bringing you another episode of Recruit Review. Last time, it was a while ago, apologize for that, we covered Zach Charbonnet. Today, we're covering four-star wide receiver Cornelius Johnson. Stick around towards the end of the video. I'm going to be showing you guys a new way to vote on who you guys want to see for the next episode of Recruit Review. Let's get into Cornelius Johnson. He's a Connecticut guy, straight out of Don Brown territory in Greenwich, Connecticut. He went to New Brunswick high school that's their first power five recruit since 2009 they sent a two-star guy to west virginia i'll throw up his stats up over here as a sophomore he had 38 receptions just over 700 yards and 10 receiving touchdowns junior year played i think only six games i don't know if there's an injury 22 receptions 361 yards and six touchdowns he upped his production his senior year, 45 receptions, 779 yards, 11 receiving touchdowns. His testing numbers, I'll throw them up over here, 4, 5, 8, 40, pretty good given his size, around 6, 2, 6, 3, uh, depending on who you ask at 195 so a, a 458 not blazing but at that size very solid. 4.13 shuttle again given that size great agility. He had a 36.7 vertical which is solid. Let's move on to recruitment. So January 2018 saw his first Power 5 offer from Virginia. He had additional offers coming through uh, starting in February, March from Pitt, Rutgers, West Virginia, Vanderbilt, Notre Dame, and then Michigan offered in March of 2018. He took two unofficial visits during the 2017 season to Duke and Penn State, two unofficial visits in the summer of 2018 to Stanford, April's when his big offers started coming in. Michigan, Penn State, Nebraska, Stanford, Alabama. Had an official visit to Notre Dame in September. Official to Penn State in early December. He had two separate coach visits from Penn State, so they were pursuing pretty hard at that time. The week after his Penn State official, he took a visit to Michigan. Signed to the Wolverines on December 19th of 2018. Obviously, very highly Sought after recruit, especially academic schools, came after him hard. His mom is from Detroit and has family in the southeast uh, Michigan region. Both his mom and dad graduated from Stanford. His mom went to Michigan's medical school, so there's your family connection. And his mom was a big proponent of pushing him to go to the Michigan Wolverines, so mama knows best. Let's go on to his ratings. Uh, they all agree he's a four-star. Uh, right around the 25 or so uh, wide receiver, uh, either one or number two in Connecticut, depending on who you ask. And nationally, he ranks around the 200 range, ESPN being the outlier, having him at 239, but a pretty close group in the uh, upper 100s towards the 200 range. Rivals in ESPN have him at 6'3", 247 has him at 6'2", so he's right around just under 200 pounds at the 6'2", 6'3", mark, so great size for an outside wide receiver. Then let's move on to his scouting. Most of this will be from 247's Brian Don, but uh, I'll get to scouting as well, as I always do after the video. But just going into his film, expect a big frame with a large catch radius. He has a frame to add about 15 pounds to get up to 210 or so. He gets off the line quickly and has good technique against the jam. Solid acceleration, great top end speed for his size. Tracks the ball well, ability to use the size he does have. Big, strong hands and willing blocker. So not a whole lot there that people can knock on. The only knocks he did have was route running. He was noted to round off some of his cuts. I didn't see this that much, but that's one area. And then upper body strength that'll come with time. Uh, let's go to the film. Okay, first play, top of the screen. Seam route showing really good burst and speed. Again, this is in Connecticut, so keep that in mind. But good burst at the end here to pull away for a touchdown. Second one, watch the route here on this slant and go. Good head fake. Good break out of his cut. And again, pulling away at the end. Play number three, another seam. Just using that speed to pull away. Really fluid. Nice job. High pointing the ball mid stride for the touchdown. Good footwork off the line of scrimmage right there to get an inside release. Again, up the seam. Really good burst to track the ball in the air. And again, he's, he's a big play guy. Uh, gets a touchdown here. Kick return here on the left side by your screen. Again, good stiff arm there. And then really shows that acceleration. His acceleration to me is better than his top end speed, which are both very solid. Uh, shows some ability after the catch here. This is one thing I didn't see a whole lot in his film. I included a couple plays, uh, but he does have some wiggle to him, makes some people miss, but again, uh, it is Connecticut. Uh, ridiculous, uh, ridiculously good job here of following the broken play. 
He mirrored the quarterback and then breaks the outside. And then again, that burst, he gets through. His tackle one, two, and he is gone. So makes him pay for some poor tackling, but also really good acceleration, creating some bad angles. And this is probably one of my favorite plays. Just shows some ridiculous strength here on this simple slant. Again, good technique. And then one, two, three, is that like four, five, probably six tackles right there. Ooh. And then he just had a plethora of great sideline catches here. Really high pointing the ball on that one. But uh, here you'll see four or five just really solid catches on the sideline. And you might think, oh, these look like they might not be catches. Now, after every single one, they showed like a still shot of him with the ball in his hand and having a foot in bound. So all these catches are legit catches. And they made sure in the film to show his footwork on the sideline, confirming that these are catches. So uh, really great diving catch there as well. So really good potty control at 6263. Really, really big uh, catching radius. And my God, that one hand catch. And uh, yeah, again, diving catch, really crazy to keep that foot in bounds. And then these last two plays will show it's blocking. You see like 50 yards down the field, gets a block. And then uh, look how excited he is after this last play. So he's at the top of the screen blocking on this uh, run, and then he's just pumped. So, you know, overall, I agree with most of the scouting that I went through from 247's guy. Really impressed with his ability off the line of scrimmage. He seemed strong and confident with his hands. Great body control. Catching radius was phenomenal. Acceleration is better than his speed, but both still very good. He does have the ability to run crisp routes. You saw on the uh, like slant and go, he really can accelerate out of his breaks pretty effectively. And he's a willing blocker. The only knocks maybe you could have about him is he isn't really a burner. He probably won't pull away from guys at the power five level. Uh, I didn't see a whole lot in open field space. I don't see him kind of a jitterbug state, but again, Michigan has plenty of recruits too that do that. It's just not his forte. I do want to see more routes. He ran a lot of out routes. I, I saw a couple of slants in there, but I want to see a more developed, more crisp route tree. And obviously bulk up at 6'2". Uh, you want to see a guy closer to 210 or so, and he's at 195. He'll have the time to get there. Real quick before we get to projection, uh, if you're not subscribed, please do so. It helps the channel a bunch. All your comments, likes, and subscriptions do go a really long way. These are all the commenters. I'll put them all on the screen here who offered suggestions of who I should cover for the next video. Keep that up. It really helps me see who you guys want to see for the upcoming episodes. There will be a poll at the top of your screen somewhere up here that will go into who I decide to cover for the next episode. Also, follow my Twitter at Steven Tosky to see a Twitter poll for the next episode as well. Let's move on to projection. So a redshirt year seems like the best approach given you have DPJ, Black, and Collins all on the outside, all with experience. As long as those guys are healthy, knock on wood for Tariq Black's feet, at least two of those three guys, if not all three, are probably going to the NFL. If I'm a betting man, I'm guessing two will go and we'll have one more. That still only leaves you with one of those three guys and... Uh, Ronnie Bell on the outside, really. Opportunity as a redshirt freshman to be the third uh, contributing outside wide receiver. And, you know, with Gaddis as hopefully still the offensive coordinator next year, uh, you can use all the offensive weapons as we can get. Maybe expect him in a couple games this year just to get his feet wet, but bulk up, you know, get technique down, better route tree, and he should be a force redshirt freshman year and definitely look to be a, a multi year starter. If not, as a redshirt freshman, getting significant time, definitely as a redshirt sophomore. And I'm expecting big things from him. Okay, uh, hopefully I kept this one short. I know the last ones have been like 10 minutes or so. So I uh, hopefully this one was a bit shorter. But thank you guys for, for watching. I appreciate all the support thus far. I uh, got a lot coming. We've got a podcast coming soon. Um, another episode of Recruit Review. I'm starting my season hype video. So got a lot planned hoping to get a bunch done before the start of the season, and then I'll get my uh, in-season analysis going. So excited to only have about a month left of no more football. Thanks again for all the support. Hope you guys are having a great day. As always, go Blue.